welcome back to my channel. I'm Athena. This is my channel, Stitch and Goddess Designs. This is a channel about cross stitch and Harry Potter. Um, I got my Pepsi. I'm emotional support Pepsi, security Pepsi, whatever we want to call it. But um, I can't be me without Pepsi. <laughs> Y'all, do you ever get in a place where you have a million things to do? You've got a to-do list a mile long. And then somehow you end up spending a good portion of your day doing something that's totally not necessary at all. I had that yesterday. Um, up in my office, working, getting shirts done, being productive, doing the thing. I'm all proud of myself. I fell down a rabbit hole. And next thing I know, <laughs> I don't know if I can show it to you, um, Buffalo Bills body lotion you guys no this shirt is not for sale um it took <clears throat> it's a beast but yeah I made this shirt for myself yesterday <sighs> um yeah anyways I got taxes to get done Psh. I got you know a house that needs to be cleaned Psh. I got like groceries and all the things. Psh, nah, nah, nah. Uh, do I need to catch up on all my stitching? Yeah. Do I mean? Anyways, I made a shirt, y'all. <laughs> um, you'll have to let me know in the comments if you get this reference because to me, I thought it was like everybody knows this. <laughs> um. But in my small in in my small group of friends, no, not everybody understood what this shirt was. So, um, <clears throat> let me know if you understand what this shirt is. Um, okay, squirrel moment over. Um, I've got some magical haul for you. I've got some mini things to show you. I've got a tiny bit of stitching. Um, I said last week I was gonna read from this grimoire of forgotten fairy tales. I will. I will. It is sitting right here on top. We don't have a very long episode, I know, because I don't have a lot to show you. I will be reading from that. Um, so, yeah, let's do the stitching. And, of course, we've got comments and would you rathers. Always. Um, I worked on Praiseworthy Stitches, Simple Gifts Halloween. This I'm doing as a stitch along. If anybody else is stitching it, let me know. I've divided it up into 12 sections. So it should be a start and finish for 2024. Um, hashtag 12 gifts of Halloween. Hashtag one, two gifts of Halloween. And um, I don't know why my nose all of a sudden wants to be like runny, but I'm fine. Um, I don't have any sort of symptoms at all. I mean, I wonder if it was the storm last night, but no, I don't have... Any congestion, cough, sore throat, anything else. Um, I know I was like really congested last week when I was here, um, but I did test negative and like symptoms started improving and like going away. So I didn't feel a need to test again. So, and the wispies are in full force today. Good lord. Okay. Anyways, I stitched on this, y'all. Shoe, and it's still in my stand in the Q snap. Um, here's where we are. I think I did this last week. I took this off, set it to the side so I could show you guys the whole thing. And then I could not find that piece. I had to steal it from a different cue snap. I don't know where it ran away to. Anyways, um, I've been stitching over here clearly, but here's the overall. Um, over here was like January. Here was February. This is into March and it's going to come down and there's a little bit more down here. So I've got this moon to do pattern. I've got this moon to do. I've got this cat with the word boo and I think that acorn. And that's all that's left for March. So that's where it is. I'm loving the way the colors are laying, the variegated, um, Orange is beautiful, so, and that is lobster 
lobster something or other. I feel like it's something about lobsters. Hold please. Lobster claw. <laughs> um, that's lobster claw by Classic Color Bricks. Okay, I'm just gonna set that there. Um, oh, I don't have a picture of it. Wait, hold please. I do have a picture of it. I'll find it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We'll get there. So on the 7th is the Harry Potter um, stitch chat group situation. This fluffy hair is irritating me. If you are stitching on something Harry Potter and you would like to chat on the 7th of every month, let me know. Send me a message. Um, message me on um, Instagram and then we'll figure out how to get you added to the group over on Facebook. It's a Facebook Messenger group and I post a Zoom link and we chat on the 7th every month. So, and we stitch on Harry Potter. Um, I am started, finally, um, the mini bottle for February. Um, I needed to stitch February's mini bottle and March's mini, mini bottle. But I started this one, it's the Burrow, and fittingly enough, it's the Ford Anglia, which has to do with our Would You Rather from last week. Um, but, you guys, 17 million colors in these little bottles. Um, there's the floss list. I mean, okay. Um, and here's my start. You're going to be so, so impressed with me. Um, yeah. And why? Why did I choose to start with that color on this fab? Like, I'm invisible stitching. I'm literally invisible stitching. I don't even, oh, I know what that is. That's the tag. That big section right there, that's the tag. Um, I'm like, I don't even know what that is. Uh, but yeah, there we go. Um, it was the center color. That's, that's why it ended up happening. And then when I started stitching, I'm like, why? Why am I invisible stitching? I hate it. Um, clearly I only stitched on it that night and then I went back to, um, praiseworthy stitches because I wanted to get March done. So, um, that's all the stitching I've done. I wanted to get a lot more than that done. The weekend got eaten up. Um, my husband was feeling neglected with me being gone for so long and he was like, what do you do with me? Um, so we ended up watching True Detective and I think we finished out season three on Saturday and like watched all of season four on Sunday or maybe we finished it on Saturday. Oh yeah. Yeah. I think that's what we did. And then on Sunday was, what was I doing on Sunday? Oh, I was making books for my mini thing that was happening too. Okay, so um, True Detective season four, sorry, Squirrel. True Detective, well, all of them, they're all pretty good. Um, season four felt rushed. I really liked it, but it did feel rushed. And then when I looked into it, like all the other seasons were eight episodes. This one was only six. Um, but it was still really good. And I thought I knew, I thought I had it. I thought I knew all the way up until the end. And then the end was like, no, no, you, I did not have it. <laughs> um, I thought I had it solved inside my head of like what, who, whatever, you know, who did what. And no, I didn't have even the slightest inclination that that's where that was going to go. <laughs> um, so really good. Um, Let's see. Plans for stitching. Um, I, stitch? Actually stitch? Actually put needle thread fabric together and make the X's happening. Um, I will say that I did get 300 stitches in um, on this and then I may, it was up into here and then I finished off this and then this so I may be close to another 300 um, and I can actually like posts some fandom stitching challenges this week. I haven't even looked at the challenges to, but the challenges are so, they're not, they're, they're very 
loose, right? They're very, um, they're like, I can't, I can't put the words together. You guys, I think we're officially into the red days now. And I did wake up this morning with a headache. I am super groggy. I am turning up all of the action for you guys. And by the, by the time I'm done with this, I will slump back in this chair and probably need an hour to recover. They're very, if you can, if you can describe your whip to make the match the challenge, they'll accept it. That's what I want to say. Um, you know, s stitch on something that makes you happy. Everything makes us happy. Stitch on something that reminds you of summer. Okay, well, there's like a leaf in there. Leaves are on trees in the summer. Like, it can be, I'm making up things, but obviously, um, they're not very strict. That was the word I was like, <laughs> not very strict. They're not very strict on their challenges. You guys, I feel like the brain fog and the um, grasping of the words gets to be a lot harder um, the closer we get to infusion day and we're starting in those red days. So bear with me. Okay. Let's do, look, we're only 12 minutes in and we're jumping into would you rathers and comments. I don't have any stitching haul to show you. I showed you my stitching. I, yeah, we're flying through this today. Last week's would you rather was, would you rather, um, would you rather fly in the Fort Anglia? Um, or in flying in the flying motorbike. Okay. So I was cracking up at how many people were like, duh, the car, I can't stitch in the motorbike. Okay. Um, enchanting stitching Dawn. I would rather, um, or I would have to pick the car. It would be more enjoyable in a variety of weather. Um, I don't know how to say this name. But welcome. Oh my gosh. Welcome to everybody. I should have started off with this right in the very beginning. Consider myself completely humbled and shocked and amazed. Last week, I'm sitting here talking about how I think we may have triggered bots. All of these random names with letters or numbers and blah, blah, blah. And I don't understand. And who are all these people? Like, I'm, first of all, the fact that, like, five of you are watching is insane. Like, what? And, um, so, <laughs> here's me seriously thinking, like, mm, I think we triggered a spam bot or something, right? No. No. There are actual people who actually watch me and actually like to comment on things. <laughs> so, my apologies, to, first of all, to Dave F., um, and also with the numbers, like, okay, I don't, I guess I, there's numbers at the end of enchanting stitching. I guess I just never paid attention. There's numbers at the end of Daphne. There's numbers at the end of everybody. I guess I just haven't been paying attention this whole time. I've just been blocking it out because I, even like Sue's got them at the end of hers. And then I was looking at mine. I have them at the end of mine. Liz doesn't have them on hers. How did you not get them on yours, Liz? Um, everybody's got numbers. So somebody said in the comments that YouTube added these numbers on. Here's me like being completely oblivious and not even realizing. And my sincere apologies to everybody who is in fact real. Um, and thank you for watching. I just, I, I have imposter syndrome, I guess, sometimes. Like I don't feel like y'all really want to be watching. I don't know. Okay. Well, past that awkward moment, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And Dave F, I did receive your email. I haven't replied to it yet, but I did receive your email. I think that I've heard from everybody as far as the prizes that need to get mailed out. Um, I haven't mailed them out clearly, um, but I will hopefully get to that this weekend because I'll be mailing out a bunch of shirts so I can also mail out, um, 
prices as well. Okay. Um, so Nuitari, Nuitari, um, N-U-I-T-A-R-I, Nuitari, Nuitari, that's how I'm going to say it. Please let me know <laughs> what your actual name is. Or if that, oh my God, I'm just like foot in mouth. If that is your name, um, let me know how to pronounce that. Okay, Fort Angley all the way. <laughs> I'm, I'm horrible today. Um, they say Fort Angley all the way. Always seemed if you made friends with a Ford, it would treat you well. I 100%, like it totally turned, it totally took on like animalistic character characters. <sighs> the words today, you guys. Animalistic, animal characteristics. I was combining the words. Okay. I feel like um, I'm catching up on floss tubes. I'm two months behind. I'm still back in January watching floss tubes. And I was just watching um, Sarah, the redneck bifocal stitcher. If you don't watch her, go watch her. And she struggles with perfectionism. And um, she's, there was like a moment in the floss tube that I was watching that she was like, oh, I want to, I, mm, I want to stop and restart because that wasn't good. I'm having a whole moment right now of like, mm, we're only 17 minutes in to try to restart this. <laughs> I'm all over the place and this is fun. We're fine. This is real life. Let's keep going. Um, also, they said that I need to get some essence of Mertlap um, on my sunburn. <laughs> you guys, the amount of makeup covering my face right now, <laughs> so you guys don't see it, but it's there. Um, and it's pretty, like, it's pretty much gone on my arm. Okay. Daphne. Um, oh, she's letting me know what erase markers are called vis-a-vis, vis 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 wet erase fine point. Um, when she was in school, teachers used them to write on the clear sheets that they use on the overhead projectors. Um, Yeah. I remember the overhead projectors. Um, it makes sense that those were wet erase markers. Um, yeah, I just, I haven't seen them recently. Anyways, um, Audrey Fleming says, um, I think we all need to support something. <laughs> Be it a person or an object or a pet or a Pepsi. <laughs> My emotional support Pepsi. Um, life could be hard sometimes and I am all for whatever makes it easier. Of course. Yes. Not sometimes. Life is hard. Like, seriously, everybody is going through something. Everybody is on stage a million at this point of the drama of their lives. Everything is difficult. Everything is hard. It's just... I guess everybody has different levels of difficulty. But also, like I told a friend this week... Don't, I'm going to struggle with words here. Don't invalidate your struggles because somebody else has it worse or you think that somebody else has it worse or like, I mean, me struggling with MS, right? Am I dying? No. Like I'm, I'm, you know, there's people fighting cancer right now. There's people... And, um, with MS who are wheelchair bound and not able to like f function in life without somebody helping them. So do other people have it worse? Yes. But does that mean that my struggle isn't important? No. So if you're struggling, no matter how big or small, don't invalidate your struggle because somebody else is struggling more. You can still be there for that person struggling and others can still be there for you for your struggle too. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. I'm struggling with words. Anyways, that took a serious turn for a minute. <laughs> but we're all going through something and we all need 
follow the dopamine. Like if it's going to bring you joy, let it bring you joy. Like just let it, no matter what other people are saying. And like, this is the perfect example. Oh my gosh. I literally just saw an interview this week and I feel like a lot of Potter fans are getting really upset and I'm not going to remember her name and darn it. I wish I could. She's hilarious. Um, but she is the actress who plays, um, Jeez, now I can't even remember the character's name. Is it is it's Madame Pomfrey, right? Madame Pomfrey from Herbology. I'm gonna kick myself if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's Madame Pomfrey because I'm either getting confused with the nurse and the Herbology teacher, but the nurse was was the nurse Madame Pomfrey? Oh my God! I should restart this whole episode. The Herbology teacher from Harry Potter, the actress who portrays the herbology teacher, Beth is screaming at me right now, did an interview this last week and was like, um, I don't understand why adults are like still Harry Potter fans. Like this is a, this is a child thing. Like this is a series made for children and there are full grown adults who are like obsessed and she's like, I just don't understand it. Like, you, you need to move on with your lives. And she's dead serious. And I'm like, oh, the audacity. The audacity. If it's going to bring me joy in, in the audacious times we're living in right now, let it bring you joy. Good Lord, look at the squirrel we just took. Okay, thanks, Audrey. Thanks for that <laughs> rabbit hole we all just went down. Krissa, um, you messaged me on Instagram, so I did get you that conversion for Frogwars year one. Um, Sue, um, she would rather fly on the motorbike. We got a motorbike. Um, my dad used to race motorcycles off road and I would ride with him on the front of him on the gas tank. <laughs> Talk about the times have changed. Um, I... She said, I have also ridden on the back of one in Washington, D.C. during rush hour traffic, which, I mean, is that even really riding? Because you're probably just parked the entire time. Um, unless you're swerving in between rush hour and it's like swerving in between the cars. Was that what that was like? Anyways, yeah, riding in the back of pickups, riding on somebody's lap on a motorcycle, like, just, you, you don't see those things anymore. Um, Liz said, uh, she doesn't do well as a passenger. So she, either way, she would prefer to be driving. Um, I would per much, I, but I would much prefer a chauffeur in the flying Ford Anglia, um, rather than the motorbike. Mm, she works in personal injury law and the things I have seen with motorbikes. No, thank you. Um, Yeah. I, I know there's a, I'm sure people who work in healthcare too, like the seeing of the, um, motorcycle accidents. Blah. Um, Lynn, uh, <laughs> you wouldn't be you without your Pepsi. <laughs> she said, maybe we could get Pepsi to support, sponsor your channel. <laughs> Insert Pepsi commercial here. <laughs> no. Um, talk about imposter syndrome. If I got a sponsor for this plus two, that would be hilarious. Amanda said chauffeur all day, um, every day in a car, not on a motorbike. I don't like the outside. <laughs> I don't like the outside. <laughs> um, I mean, bugs flying in your face. Can you imagine trying to, and first of all, you wouldn't be stitching, but just bleh, bleh. Um, Wendy past land, um, I'd rather have a chauffeur ride in a car so that I can take advantage all year round, not just the warm seasons. Um, I screenshotted Bip Bippity Bo. Why? There was a reason. Um, oh, sh they, they are saying, um, they would really like to stitch on a long dog. Um, and they've never used um, a stitching journal 
before or general four stitching um but they might start yeah i mean being able to write down every day what you're working on especially like i mean for floss tube purposes i have to like look back at my journal especially with memory um issues now and see what in the world i was doing and yeah um but also like being able to look back and see like okay we had a good stitching month okay we had a bad stitching month like keeping track of all of the sows and all of the stitch challenges and all of the goals and this, that, and the other. Yeah. That's fun. Plus I'm getting over my sticker anxiety. <laughs> I feel like we all had sticker anxiety as children. We were afraid to use them because then they'd be gone forever. Um, but I'm getting over that sticker anxiety and I'm using them all over the place in my journals. So, um, yeah. And then Cindy Bennett was telling me about how like, YouTube, YouTube is like changing the names somehow. Um, the Happy Stitcher, um, she did say I'm one of your newer watchers. I definitely am subscribed. <laughs> Can't say how I found your channel. Perhaps it, it came up on my feed. Um, yeah, so just another person saying like, <laughs> we're real. <laughs> states lol i'm definitely a real person i do not know why youtube has added numbers to the youtube name it didn't always come up like that unfortunately um yeah saying that um they don't have instagram or facebook so i did get your email um and um my favorite car in the world is the ford anglia my uncle had one when i was a wee boy and fell in love with them then that's so cool. Um, Lynette, I don't understand how your name is misspelled on your birth certificate. If it's on your birth certificate, isn't that just your name? Or that's just not how your parents wrote it down? They, they wanted it to be spelled a different way? Um, yeah, I'm confused. I'm like, if it's mis... I just feel like your birth certificate is how your name is spelled, like, period. Unless they, like, reprinted it and misspelled it or something. I don't know. Um, and then she said she's been too lazy to go through the hassle of changing it. Heck, yeah. I still have my um, maiden name. Never took my husband's name because why? Not feminine power and, yes, keep your name and you don't have to change your name for your man and this that and the other and uh I was lazy I didn't want to do all of that paperwork um yeah so um she said she would choose the uh Anglia for stitching and fewer bugs <laughs> yes uh loves to read I would definitely ride the flying Ford Anglia versus on the back of the motorbike my reasoning is simple I can't stitch on the back of a motorbike um, also, thank you very much. Um, loves to read. Her name is Christy and our pronouns are she, her. So yay. Thank you. Thank you, Christy. Um, Lori, um, I would choose the Flying Ford Anglia because there's, there's no room for on the motorbike for cross stitch per purchases. I love how everybody's like, no, I need the car because I got a cross stitch. Um, Pam, I say Anglia all the same as you and I would definitely rather ride in it as the motorcycle oh and maybe I'd get to visit the borough um I mean I feel like the motorbike and the Anglia both end up at the borough at some point but yeah okay I think that was it yes thank you Ugh. boy those comments really took us down a rabbit hole today um okay we're back on the regular would you rathers um, I should be using a pencil to mark off the ones we've already done um, because there's going to get to a time where I'm like, wait, did we do this one yet? Um, and we did do, we did already do uh, Radioactive Fish or the Porcupine. And I feel like I didn't really tally them up, but I feel like a lot of people said that they would rather, I don't know. I don't, I we, I should go back and tally that because I don't know which one. There was quite a few people that said fish. And I was surprised on that. So, um, 
but that one is check mark done check mark done okay would you rather have one best friend or five friends who don't know know you really well have one best friend or five friends who don't know you really well one or five I mean that's easy one because best friends like know everything about you I mean I would rather have five best friends ten best friends maybe 20 Ooh, that's a lot um it's hard keeping up with unless you have like a group chat it's hard keeping up with all of the friends all of the time okay one best friend or five friends who don't know you really well um i'm gonna show you some mini stuff next i think yes let's do mini stuffs you guys you can't see this. I can't tip it to show you. I have been making many things. Um, I feel like tweezers are needed to show you this stuff properly. I have tweezers here somewhere. Please. Thank you. There you are. Because my big old fingers get in the way and you can't see the things. Oh, oh. Look, it's called a little bat. I've got a little bat. I built this chair. I built this little rocking chair. Um, this guy, I could just pick this guy up. Y'all, I made these flowers. 100%, I made those flowers. I'm going to show you the destruct destructions. That's what I call them. I'm going to show you the destructions. And you're going to see exactly how I made those flowers. Look at the little guy. Oh, he's so cute. Um, all of these are from my bookshelf kit thingy my bobber look at this book i had to like glue the pages in there so it like stands up like that um what else do i want to show you oh i made this whole shelf Let's see if the tweezers can hold this i made this whole shelf i made all the things on the shelf I made all the things on the shelf and then glue them all to the shelf. Um, I whittled wood to create this candlestick, y'all. I cannot. Um, oh, 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 this one is really good. I made, I'm not going to show you everything in here, but I cut out that butterfly of, out of paper. Like you can see he's 3D, right? I cut him out and I glued him on there and then onto the paper and then put the frame around it. Oh, that one was hard. I've made a bajillion books. I have like folded books. I have glued books to like pieces of wood. I have made like little paper wood box, not wood, um, paper book box thingy-bobbers. Um, we have like little hollow ones hollow ones. They're going to sit on the shelf, I'm assuming. Um, I tied up a little bundle of newspapers. I cut out all those newspapers, folded them all, and tied them together. I cannot. Um, <laughs> the amount of work that went into that, insane. Okay, let me show you some of the instructions so that you guys can get a grasp on what it is I'm doing here. This is the kit. Um, magic bookstore. Um, there's more pictures. <laughs> there's those flowers that I made. Okay. I would like to show you how I made the flowers. I had a square. I had a, first of all, there was a square big piece of pink. You had to cut out a 1.7 centimeter circle, fold it, cut it, do all the things to make the flower. Cut these out from a sheet of paper, like, <sighs> look at these ones. Cut that. I had to cut that. <laughs> Here's the whittling of the wood. <laughs> get the wood. It literally says get a razor blade and whittle it down. <laughs> you guys, <laughs> I cannot. Um, what's another one that was like super ridiculous to make? 
Um, I haven't even attempted. I made the fireplace thing, but I haven't attempted the electric components yet. Um, oh, that grass. Look, that's how it came. And then they were like, scissors for this to this. I'm like, how? But how though? But I did it. I was like shaping it and then I was like, oh. And so I was just sticking the scissors in and like pulling. And like it was like kind of stretching out. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> look, those are all of the sheets. Cut them out, fold them, tie them together. Oh my gosh, I made this one. Cut out the cut out the feather. Glue it to a piece of wire so that oh my gosh. And then all of the books. All of the books. I made this basket. Did I have this basket in here? Oh, I do have this basket. <laughs> basket. <laughs> Oh, okay. Um, it's been real and it's been fun. I don't know about real fun. Um, but yeah, this is where I'm at right now. This is the step I'm on right now. So I just finished the chair and now I got to make this table. Um, I made all the little things. Okay. I made all the, like make all the little things, then make the shelf, then put the little things on the shelf. I think that I would have rather made the shelf than made the little things and stick it to the shelf because now I'm having to like backtrack amongst the 50 bajillion little things I've made and find the right components to put them in the basket on the shelf on the table like whatever but I feel like the it's a little bit backwards in that way so I'm making many things okay Magical Hall, um, the Bradford Exchange, y'all. I've had this on my radar for a long time, and I canceled yet another Harry Potter box because I still have not gotten the box that I ordered and paid for in November, and it was supposed to have shipped in December, and then early January, and then late February, and now it's March, and I still don't have the box. So I went ahead and canceled it. I'm like, no, if we're going to be playing for three months at a time of like delaying, then I'm going to cancel that one. Um, and that was, what was that one? When I get it, I'll tell you guys what it was. I can't remember what it was now. Um, Lit Joy has canceled. They don't have a Harry Potter box anymore. I'm still getting the Accio box. Um, but... Regardless, I decided to get the um, perpetual calendar from the Bradford Exchange. And that's what it looks like. And so you have them all on display all along the sides. Like these are the month things. And then the month that it is, you put it up here at the top. It comes with all the numbers and everything. So um, I would like you guys to pay close attention to the fact that Ron looks like he's got red hair there. Um... I got my January piece, Hedwig, looking amazing, and I got my Ron piece. <laughs> he's brown hair, brown. There's nothing about it. Plus, he looks like he's got two teeth. Um, I don't know. I'm definitely gonna. I'm definitely gonna repaint his hair, cause I can't. Um, so. The other thing I noticed when I was went back and got this picture that all of the little months had like the little lightning bolt above it. Um, mine don't. Um, I'm paying a pretty penny for these. Um, also, like it's a limited collection, so they number everything. But like paying a pretty penny and I got to repaint Ron's hair. I'm not happy about that. Um. Okay, so that was my little magical haul. Um, shirt update, um, for Stitch and Goddess Designs, t-shirts, I make stitchy shirts and other fun related shirts. Um, I have a March 
order form that's out, open right now. There's four shirts, two new designs, two returning designs from Pandora's box. Um, link down below, also linked in my Instagram. I have a Facebook group, Stitching Goddess Designs. Instagram is at Stitching Goddess Designs. Um, check out all the things. Um, you're hearing it first here because I have not made a post yet on any of the socials, but I am going to be doing a um, seasonal series shirt design. Um, I will be releasing a seasonal design on the first day of the new season and it will be available for 24 hours only. So March 20th, which I believe is next Wednesday, um, is that the day after my infusion and my, and I'm, I'm going to be brain dead. Yes. Yes, it is. But that's okay. Um, March 20th, um, is next Wednesday. Um, this new spring related shirt will be available for 24 hours only. Um, pay attention to my Instagram and my Facebook. I will be releasing some teaser posts and stuff like that. And yeah, um, next Wednesday, pay attention. Um, and then once it's done, um, that was it. That was it. I, there may be something that I might release it next year, but yeah, 24 hours. I see it. So, um, and then come the first day of summer, we'll have the summer one come the first day of autumn. We'll have the autumn one winter, so on. So yeah, by the end of the year, um, you'll have four seasonal shirts and super excited about that. And I have all of them ready to go. Super excited. Okay. Um, I think that was everything that I was going to talk about. So we're going to actually read. I've got a squirrel in my backyard. Um, we're actually going to read from this book. Um, I did some like deep diving into this book last night um, with Janelle Coffee Wine and Stitching Time. And what led me to this book was a reel of him talking about like be careful when you knock on wood da, 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 da. um and it was like really like took a you know took a innocent phrase knock on wood and turned it into like something dark and mysterious and almost into like the creepy magic vibes right like dark magic um i was like oh my gosh yes i want that I want the, I want to read the rest of those. So I bought the book that knock on wood thing is not in the book. There's a couple of blank pages here at the back, like literally just blank pages. And I have that reel of him reading that. I'm not kidding you where I say I might just write it in the back of this book. Cause why is it not in your book? William Moore. Um, so this is the grimoire of forgotten fairy tales by William Moore. Um, I have bookmarked a few that I would like to read to y'all. So let me just go with the first one. And hopefully my tongue does not get tied and the words can actually flow. <laughs> so this is the artwork that comes with it. And this is called See a Penny, Pick It Up. See a penny, pick it up. All day long, you'll have good luck. Catch a star and make a wish. Greet the dawn with sunlight's kiss. In the forest, seek a door. Opens to a forgotten lore. Catch the glow of a fairy's flight. In the heart of the darkest night. Wake a shadow deep and old. In the gloom, its secrets unfold. Pick a relic dark and cursed. Feel the universe reversed. Find a mirror black and old. Black and cold. Darn it. Find a mirror black and cold. Reflecting all old tales untold. Watch the stars in patterns shift. Feel reality start to rift. See a penny, make your claim. But beware the endless game. Once a charm of simple luck, now a door to madness struck. So kind of talking about like, see a penny, pick it up, and then you start down this rabbit hole of doing all of the different things, right? And then you'll eventually end up in um, a state of madness, feeling reality start to rift. So, like, I think it's really cool. Um, 
some other ones that are in here, some longer ones that are in here that I probably won't have be able to read. Um, we've got, hold on. Oh no, that was just the foreword. Maybe that was the first one. Um, let me find one that I actually don't have bookmarked because it is too long. Um, one, two, buckle my shoe. This one's pretty short. I don't know why I don't have it bookmarked. Um, here. This is going to be easier. Contents. So he takes different things like um, uh, Tinker Tailor, Soldier's Sailor, um, Old Mother Hubbard, um, It's Raining, It's Pouring, Mary Mary, Quite Contrary, London Bridge is Falling Down, Rockabye Baby. I think I have that one bookmarked for y'all. That one is, it gets dark. <laughs> um, Peter, Peter, Pumpkin Eater, Wee Willie Winky, Runs Through Town. Like those sort of little fun little things and then he turns them dark. So um, really good. Uh, no, I'm not getting paid to promote this book, but I found it and it was really good and I thought it would be fun to share some of those darker fairy tales with y'all. Um, that's all I've got. If I'm forgetting something, I apologize and I will tell it to you next week. Um, thank you to all of the new watchers, commenters, subscribers, all the things. Um, even though I thought you guys were fake, <laughs> I appreciate you being here. And, um, yeah. So, with that, I hope you have a very, very magical stitchy week. And for now, Mischief Managed. Bye!